in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed motivate me to get to Lagos you can encourage me when I start say by road by the time I am seven hours don't motivate me you are wasting your time Pray for me for the staying power to remain in that car till I arrive. Are we together? We have a world that is so in need of motivation. And motivation is important, don't get me wrong. It helps to prime you to start. But there are times you will need to stay alone and say, though he slay me, I will still trust him. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Many people lack the staying power. It says, and so... After he, the he being Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Abraham did not just obtain the promise because God said he would. It took patience, it took endurance. Can I tell you the truth? For some of you, by reason of what I'm saying, God is telling you, go back to what you were doing. It is still my will. Stay there. It will not magically, you know, we have this idea that because you are in the will of God, the results will happen overnight. No, sir. There are times you will cry, you are still in the will of God. There are times it will not make sense, you are still in the will of God. This stubborn child, was it a cause to get you? He's still a pastor. Train him. Endure. 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 Hallelujah. A gentleman heard that I prayed for 72 hours. And, you know, these guys who get motivated, and that's wonderful. It's good to inspire people. The guy now sent a text that he was going to, you know, go past. He said he, he, he challenged himself <laughs> that he will go past, you know, 72 hours. And, of course, uh, there are many ways to learn. Many ways to learn. Are we together? You know, when you hear it, you think it's just easy. What is there? I assure you by experience, by the time you pass four or five hours, there has to be a grace that carries you through. There is absolutely nothing that will motivate you about that experience again. If you don't know this, you are not a person of prayer. Even if the Holy Ghost is shaking all the chairs in your room, I assure you, it is discipline that will drive you through. Are we together? Say discipline. Yes, sir. The staying power. For somebody, you are about to veer off the path of destiny. Whereas the path you have taken is the right path. You just need to remain. If you are traveling again, in my example, from Abuja to Lagos, even if by air, it will be unwise after 15 minutes to start shouting at the crew members or the pilot to say, I thought that this flight is supposed to be a fast one. No, you will have to endure. How do you endure? Sometimes you do nothing. Just sit down till you arrive. Just sit down. There are times you have to drive if you're the one driving or fly if you're the one, the pilot in charge. But there are times that you do not need to do anything. It's called the staying power. The ability to remain until the law of process runs its course in your life. Those who are good in the kitchen, you know this. There are times you mix everything. There's nothing else to do. Just close the pot and wait. Have you tried to taste food when it's on fire? You just want to pick the piece of meat by force. You know what it does to you? Because of impatience, you will burn your tongue and get, you may even, out of shock, you may push the whole food down. That's what happens to people. Impatience has cheated many people from actualizing their destiny.
Just wait 30 more minutes. The food is yours. <laughs> Are we together? You can roam around the kitchen, but wait. You can be hungry, but wait. Watch videos of food, but wait. Once the meal is ready, they now serve it beautifully and you can sit down and take your time to enjoy your meal. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to wait. I receive grace to stay. I receive grace to stand. I receive grace to be disciplined. Do you know that one million is one plus one plus one plus one plus one million? There are many people who want to save and their target is two million naira. When they get to 700,000, they get angry one day and say, look, it's only when I'm alive I'll get to two million. And they convince themselves of all kinds of things. And usually they keep the money where they will not even see it. So they just reach their hands and pull out whatever is there. One day you place your hand and not find anything there. And you say, who stole? No, it was carelessness and indiscipline that finished that money. Just because you do not know what you did with it does not mean you did not use it. And for people, they will say their money is disappearing. Now, there are real cases like that. But in most cases, it's a lie. It's just the carelessness of the individual. You need encouragement and motivation to start. But it will take discipline. It will take endurance. It will take endurance. Listen, I wrote here, you must learn to say no to many good things if you desire greatness. We have been taught that you only say no to evil things. No. There are many good things in your life you must sustain the courage to say no to. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. Remolding everything in obedience to Christ. That's what he's doing. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone running a race? A real race, say a finals. Some marathon and then while they are on, say maybe they just have two or three more turns and they are done. And someone just dangles some ice cream and says, listen, remember you like ice cream. Is ice cream wrong? No. But with respect to what you are doing, it is a distraction. Can I tell you, if the devil uses evil things to get you and you resist it, he will use good things. The most important thing is that you go down, whether by good or evil. There is a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both good and evil are connected to that tree and it has one assignment to destroy you. There are many things in your life, it's not just about good or bad, it's about wise and unwise. There are many things that may be good, but may not be wisdom for you with respect to the making that is happening to you. Is someone learning? In obedience to Christ. Stay in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ. Bring in my life. In obedience to Christ. So you must learn from an overcomer that the great are people who master the art of staying even if in their tears when a woman announces that she's pregnant usually people celebrate her and say wow especially if she's trusted God for a while people can say this is beautiful we're happy to know this five months six months and you find out that no matter what you say it doesn't bring that laughter it brought at month one and two again because at that point, what she needs is not motivation. The staying power. She will complain, but the baby is still there. She will argue, I, her husband, but he's still there. Until she finally gives birth. And everybody comes to rejoice. And sometimes she can even say, this is the last time. And then, <laughs> see that now. Is someone learning? Getting angry that there is nobody encouraging me 
is a joke. They encourage you when they were launching and cutting the scissors of that pharmacy. Now that no one is buying the drugs, now that people are not coming, you do not need motivation. You need encouragement by the Spirit. And sometimes it does not come just by saying go forward. It is discipline. Remain. Remain. Don't give up. Remain. This one is beyond motivation. It's beyond positive speaking. You just need to stay until it happens. I'm praying for someone who is weary and weak in ministry, in life, and in destiny as a parent, as a student. It looks like you have stretched yourself and you have gotten to your wit's end. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the staying power, that engracing that causes men to remain until they manifest, may it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. Please sit down. Are you ready for number six? The sixth lesson, number what? Five. Thank you for following. Okay, so number five. Hmm. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. I'll take it again slowly. Do not be hasty. This is the fifth lesson we learn from an overcomer. Do not be hasty with words and do not be hasty with commitments. Put that down first. Do not be hasty with words and do not be hasty with commitments. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. This is a profound truth. Do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. By the grace of God, I've studied many successful people, especially within the body of Christ and in ministry. I found out that the older they get, the more they place value on their words. Have you noticed that people speak faster when they are younger? The aged treasure their words. And sometimes they can be silent for very long. But in their silence, they are processing a lot of things. Young people are full of zeal. And they can shout and say a thousand words and then find out they made a mistake they cannot recall again. Do not be hasty with words. The Bible says even a fool when he is silent is regarded wise. Many of us today have committed ourselves in lives and things and people to our pain. Because if only we were a bit patient, we would have made better decisions. Is someone learning? Here's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. Did I get that right? I may have made a mistake. I've missed somewhere. My apologies. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Now, let me explain a bit on that. Listen, I wrote here that humans are largely interest-motivated and self-centered. You need to know this. Humans are largely interest-motivated and self-centered. That means in your entire lifetime, you can count literally on the palms of your hands the number of people who will come to participate with your life and destiny not expecting anything in return. Humans are largely interest-motivated and self-centered. And nothing is wrong exactly with that, except for the fact, as you'll be learning further, that because humans are self-centered, in the presence of interest, everyone is a saint. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of interest, everybody is a saint. Meaning, provided I can see how I can benefit from this process, I will usually be at my best. You know people in truth, when... There is an awareness 
that their expectations are disappointed. That's when you truly know who people are. Hallelujah. Do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. Like I said last week, there are people who have made commitments even in church and they were hasty to make those commitments. And it is now to their detriment and it is now to their peril. If only Herod was patient, he would not have made such a costly statement to tell the girl because you have danced. Ask anything up to half of my kingdom. How could he say that? And the lady went and consulted and they said, beautiful, bring on a platter the head of John. And because he was a king and he had spoken. There are many of you who made hasty statements. I will sponsor 10 of you from primary school till university and camera caught it. We live in a social media age today. After five years, someone comes to review your commitment for you. Sorry, sir, just to remind you that um, you are that philanthropist that we knew five years ago. You promised these people that you pay their school fees for the rest of their life. And now you are trapped in something you do not have the capacity to sustain. There are things before destiny defining decisions. Pray, think, and then consult with wise people. This is what made ordinary people to become overcomers. They were not hasty with words. When they brought a woman to Jesus, remember the story? A woman who was caught in adultery, the Bible says, in the very act of it. And then the people say, hey, you claim that you are sent from God. This woman now has been caught in adultery. What do you have to say? Watch Jesus, the overcomer, the wise. The Bible says he sat quietly and he was writing on the ground. I'm sure the people were impatient, boiling, hoping to trap him. If I were Jesus, I'm sure they would have caught me immediately. Maybe that's where they would have even crucified me. Because of careless statements and you would not have died a savior. You would have died a loser. You see that? He kept quiet and he was writing. And then he looks up from the residue of wisdom. He says, he who is without sin among you should cast the first stone end of discussion what's the effect of such wisdom the bible says and they were convicted from the oldest what kind of word do you say that from the eldest to the last their conscience gets under arrest one sentence ladies and gentlemen from the oldest because the older you are the more you need repentance and forgiveness and so from the oldest to the youngest and the Bible says they left and the woman was standing alone there. And he says, woman, where are thine accusers? And then he said, had no man condemned thee? And he said, go and see no more. That was it. There are many times that before you make the business decision, can I tell you, the moment people want to rush you, there is most likely deception around the corner. Let me give you this as a powerful secret. The moment, just sign, don't worry, you will read it tomorrow. You just sign. Is it not me? You don't trust me again? Are we not from the same village? Tell them, please. Anything that is so, there are few things that demand that kind of urgency. Very few things. Maybe life and death issues, I can agree. But most cases are not life and death issues. It's just deception. And so you sign something. And they say, thank you. And you know, sometimes when people are about to deceive, they are polite, they are very nice. Say, don't worry, we are very nice. And as soon as you sign it and stamp it, then you realize you just signed that for every other thing you will get, 30% of it will go to that company. Whether you have left them or not. Can you imagine that? A construction company comes and because they are trying to give you this, you sign and stamp. And they tell you, if you leave the construction company and you sell the house to someone else, to the 10th person that occupies the house, you will still be remitting to the original person. You didn't look at it, you just signed. It's after five years they will come with a lawyer and with your signature. You will argue and argue and still pay. In the name of Jesus, whatever wants to rush you unnecessarily, God gives speed, but he does not rush men. Please listen to me. God gives speed, 
but he does not rush people unnecessarily. This is also true for ministry. Don't feel you are too anointed to wait for God and you commission yourself and crash land for nothing. And beware of those who deceive you and tell you, look, you are too anointed to be in this state. You are still a prayer warrior in the prayer department. If I had half of your anointing, I would be a general overseer. And you say, really? I even have an extra auditorium. We can start from there. Reminds me of what happened after our first crusade in this ministry. True story. We usually hold our crusades in collaboration with the PFN. And so after the crusade, it was a small crusade, but it was a, a, quite a phenomenal one. And did you know that after that, there were a few pastors, true story. They called me and they said, look, would you want to come and establish a branch of your ministry there? Say breakthrough. God is my witness. It looked very tempting. I mean, they were sincere people. They said, no, no, no. With this kind of result, I think you should be here. And I told them, I said, let me go to the Lord and inquire of him. I remember, I will use the direct words. The Lord told me if I did that, I would die. It was not causing me. I am looking from, from hindsight now. The level of ignorance that I had in my life at that time, if I had made a mistake of branching out, it would have been a disaster to my, to my, my peril. In 2013, I think it was, remember the vision? That I saw a plane and it was written the name of the ministry, ENI. It was about to land in Abuja and it crashed. I knew that it was in the will of God to come here, but it was not the timing yet. I submit to you by the Spirit of God and some of the people who did this are following watching now. There are people who have opened offices for me across a number of nations and by the Spirit of God I politely requested, I told them, please, I appreciate your zeal. I know that you are taking a step. I appreciate your initiative, but please, can you help me and close it? Can you look at open doors and still know that this may not be God that opened it? I told you, even the prison, you enter the prison through an open door. It takes an open door to be in jail. So when a door is open, verify where you are going first so that you don't find yourself in a prison because even a prison has a door. Hallelujah. Do not be hasty with words. There are times you need to tell the people, all right, no problem. Please, can you allow me a day? Let me think about it. And sometimes in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit will tell you, call so, 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 and so person. Call so, 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 and so person. There are many people with all due respect who have been scammed because they were hasty with commitments. You just saw some email, for instance. You know, most of these boys do all those things. You just won 20 million US dollars, 10 million US dollars. And the devil will program it immediately after miracle service. And you will just believe. You see, this is why ignorance is not good. God does not bless people that way. There is a system for growth, line upon line, precept upon precept. If you have not managed 100,000 with dignity, God will never give you a billion just like that. He loves you too much to kill you. Hallelujah. Have you ever been blessed in a way that you are now afraid of what you had? You suspect yourself, you suspect your wife, you suspect your children. The way you are behaving, people know something has happened in your life because you are not normal again. You are not used to that realm and you did not grow into it. Why is this door suddenly locked? What is your business? I say, ah, no, something must be there. I release grace upon you to not be hasty in making commitments. In the name of Jesus Christ. Joining associations, joining clubs, becoming part of whatever, relocating even sometimes, and then moving from one region to one region. Perhaps you were in a region in Abuja that was manageable, your budget was fair and fine on that, and someone just tells you, there's an opportunity here. I can support you for the first year. How about the other years? And you did not think about it. There are times you maximize moments. But can I tell you, you are never disadvantaged if you have to pray before you act. 
you are never disadvantaged if you have to seek counsel before you act. Even if in the process of praying, thinking, and seeking counsel, you miss that opportunity, I can tell you God, for his name's sake, will recycle another season to honor you again. This is God for you. Hallelujah. Someone comes and says, I want to marry you. You don't find out anything. You don't pray. Uh, I want to marry you, but I'm coming from a family of witches and wizards. No problem. Look, I'm supposed to be the next priest. It doesn't matter. And you don't think, what am I getting into? Do I have the stamina to stand against the forces? Now, I, I can tell you can be victorious, but it's important to count the cost. I'm the only Christian out of 30 people. We are 43 in our family. I'm number 39. No problem. I still love you like that. And, and most people don't think. I hope you get what I'm telling you now. And then people make all kinds of rash and careless decisions. And they may have to spend their lifetime paying that price. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. I obtain grace to think. I obtain grace to seek counsel before taking destiny-defining decisions. Hallelujah. I struggled with the Lord for three years when he began to speak to me about moving from Zaria. I wasn't sure whether I was going to Joss or coming to Abuja, but I just knew that the season had wrapped up. Now, there are times where you stay unnecessarily long. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that it's important that you stay with God. And when you are convinced and you get a matching order, then you can take that step. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not be hasty with words. Someone calls you and says, we're looking, we want to raise one billion. And we need 10 people or 100 people who will bring 10, 10 million. We know you have the capacity. And you feel motivated by that accolade. And you say, I'm in. In fact, add me three people's spots. <laughs> and then eventually when you are not able to redeem it and they ask you why, you say, I was expecting some money. You would have been patient. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this, but would you just allow me, you know, let me discuss perhaps with my wife, my children. There are people who have sold properties their wives did not know. Their properties. The major property that God has put as a, a refuge for the family. True story. I remember someone who reached me one time. And they noticed that there were some members around their land. You know, going around and thanking God. True story. And, and the woman became... If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. They were going around singing praises around the land. And, you know, the woman was concerned. Do you know that one of their sons, you know, these boys, I'm, in the name of Jesus, may you have good children. This boy went, being that he was the only son, unknown to them that he had negotiated with a church. Now, I don't blame the church. He came as, as by his, his, his land his late father's land and he negotiated everything with the church gave them at a discounted price they were happy and they transferred money to the guy's account the mother did not know no other person knew and the boy was just happy there not knowing so the woman the woman saw the people rejoicing it was their property they had paid for it but the gentleman just felt, if I tell these people, they will close my door. And most likely, you will be surprised. You will think because it's a lot of money to be used well. When the waster lands upon your life, even one billion will vanish like ten naira. I am telling you, have you seen people go down from grace to grass? Minus you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Number five, do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. Think, pray, seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. You can't call me and say, Apostle, should I wear a yellow cloth or a white cloth? No, that is not a destiny-defining decision. No, that's unnecessary. But there are certain destiny-defining decisions. Are we together now? 
Are you ready for number six? Number six. I want you to listen to this one. In fact, I just felt stirred to tell you something I learned from Dr. Mike Mudok years ago. Still on point five before we get to six. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Deception is an impatient trait. The moment you are patient, you are frustrated deception. The strength of deception is that you are impatient. The moment you make up your mind to be patient, it is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Hallelujah. When the disciples came to Jesus, they were happy and all of them were doing their thing. Judas was there, Thomas was there. Jesus never spoke to them about the kingdom, about even them being apostles. They just kept following. One time they got tired and one by one by one, they first started fighting themselves. Then they started doing a lot of things. As soon as they caught Jesus, they disappeared within 72 hours. They were all lost. Only John. Jesus resurrects and then he meets Peter in John 21. And he says, Simon by John, I lovest thou me more than this. Peter was caught to the heart. Peter was broken. And he realized that he was never truly following Jesus just because he loved him. He was hoping that he would find a place there. I advise you again, this is also true for leaders. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Number six. Are you ready? The sixth lesson that we learn from the overcomer is concerning critics and naysayers. You want to hear this? Now, critics and naysayers they do two important things that is needed for you to actualize destiny. Number one, critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress. Critics and naysayers are a system of confirmation that you are making notable progress. Show me a man that is doing something worthwhile. If there are no critics, and there are no naysayers, you are probably wrong. Critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress. The other angle to it is that critics and naysayers can be used to caution you from decline and destruction. Critics and naysayers, the first part I take it again, confirm that you are making notable progress. But critics and naysayers, listen carefully, can also be used by God to caution you from decline and destruction. So critics work both ways. They can become a system of confirmation, helping you see and know that you are making notable progress. But as uncomfortable as it is, Critics and naysayers can also be used as a system of caution to save you from decline and to save you from destruction. This is where the tragedy of only wanting supporters around you comes. The, and, and this is a weakness in leaders. We usually want those who sing our songs, those who sing our praises and say nice things around us. Unfortunately, if you are surrounded by only supporters, you may not arrive. You need both the ministry of supporters and you need the ministry of critics and naysayers. This is an uncomfortable truth, but it is wisdom that comes from overcomers. It is not unusual to have critics and naysayers. It is because you are doing something notable that has attracted their sight and their attention. And they can be used as a system of confirmation that you are making notable progress. But there are times that in the midst of the naysayings, in the midst of the criticism, look carefully 
there may be a message there that can be God speaking to you. You may not believe me, but time will make you appreciate what I'm telling you. If you do not have an open heart towards criticism, you may not arrive at your destination. A man of God will say criticism is an opinion harshly, harshly explained. There are people who may say things in a wrong way, but the content of what they are saying is worth your consideration. It's just the presentation that was wrong. Are we together? Woe betides a leader, I tell you, whether you are a businessman or you are a man of God, and you are surrounded by only supporters who sing your praises. No. There are times God will allow the ministry of critics and even naysayers. It will challenge you. It will cause you to look at what you are doing clearer. You see that now. It helps to strengthen your conviction over what you are doing. Unfortunately, because the nature of criticism, look up please. If I have 100 people who are singing my praises and saying wonderful and lovely things about me and I have one person who says something negative. Usually from our psychological buildup, the one person, the criticism may seem to overshadow all the wonderful things. This is where maturity comes in. We call this in leadership emotional intelligence. The ability to stand before uncomfortable situations and still be at ease. Are we together? You need this. You need this. Someone can look at you and say, all these people, thieves, that's your car. And your tire is even about to remove. Maybe the person made a mistake, but look properly. It could be true that in the midst of the naysayings, is telling you that you may have an accident. Something is wrong with your tire. Hallelujah. I know you would want me to pray that you will never have critics. You will never have naysayers. You are trying to say that you do not want to be Jesus or Satan. Because either way, whoever you choose among them, you will still have critics and you have naysayers. There are people who hate Jesus with a passion. There are people like me who hate Satan with a passion. Are we together? Either ways, you will never live in a world where all men love you. It does not exist. But if you live in a world where all men hate you, something is wrong with you. It's true. All men cannot hate you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a proof that something is wrong. There must be someone honest and sincere. This is also something for you to work on. Critics and naysayers play these two sets of vital roles. Number one, they can help you confirm that you are doing something notable. You see, the thing about success is that the moment your result begins to speak, usually in our world, everything becomes wrong with you. The shoes you were always wearing now, there's a problem with that shoe. Are we together? Yes. Unfortunately, it is the cross that comes with success. And people must be trained to be at peace with being controversial, at peace with being misunderstood. It is the cross that you have to carry. <laughs> you don't like what I'm saying. Unfortunately, I'm not lying. What you are hearing is the truth from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Apostle, but in my experience, everybody really loves me. I think I just have this thing about me that makes everybody loves me. Congratulations. Keep receiving prophecy about promotion and increase from me and watch what happens soon. One day you will be elevated to a position where all of a sudden the person who used to clap for you has a problem clapping now. The success is too much, not within this short time. Ah, ah. The car, it was you. The marriage was you. The house was you. All right. Um, you tell the person, I think you need to adjust this. So it's because you now bought a car. It's not about good or bad. It is a weakness in human nature. Are we together? Yeah. The moment success becomes notable, your chances are very high to be criticized. You see politicians, we talk about everybody. 
You know, sometimes in all fairness, I know that we ministers of the gospel, we receive our own too, but honestly, sometimes I pity politicians. My goodness. How those guys survive these things, I don't know. How do you survive walking and you are hearing someone insult you and sometimes people can insult you to your, your, your this, your that. And you see the people just smile. Whether it was called for or uncalled for, that kind of stamina is not worthy. There are pastors who start and say, I'm sincere. I love the Lord. I mean, what have I done? Unfortunately, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be alive and to make progress. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. To not be wounded by critics or naysayers. You can convert your pain to something that becomes a springboard for your glory. Hallelujah. When people criticize you, look open-heartedly into what they are saying. If you find out on careful examination that it is nonsense, ignore it and move on. But when you find out that there is something there for you to adjust with your life, with your organization, take advantage of it. It doesn't matter how it came. The most important thing is that the truth got to you and you become better by receiving it. This is painful, bar, but please receive it because it will make you a champion. When you look at any throne and you see an overcomer sitting there, he used the ladder of supporters and the ladder of of critics and naysayers all together he used them to climb to that elevated position may you have the strength to forbear even when people misunderstand you may you have the stamina to remain and to continue and not lose sleep in the name of jesus Amen. hallelujah praise the name of the lord i once had a man of god who said he was being criticized so badly he felt so bad and then he flew out of this nation to go and meet one of the fathers of faith. And he was talking to him and he said, Sir, I mean, how could I? I love my people with all my heart. I've been serving them with integrity of heart. How could they say this about me? And he said, according to him, he said the father of faith was just smiling at him. And when he was done, the only thing he told him was that, sit down, let me tell you my story. He had only gone halfway the story and the man said that's all right i've received my motivation if what happened to you you are still standing you mean you went through this kind of thing it is true that uneasy lies the head that wears the crown don't desire realms you are not prepared for honestly there are times you need to thank god for what you call delay because the forces that are waiting for you there if you are not built you will hate the throne because of what happens there Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Kateka Post Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.